Um, we're in. Oh, boy, these uh, mic levels are perfect with no... Wow, well, yeah, we didn't even have to do any kind of song and dance or anything. Um, what? <laughs> I'm a, I had a whole idea for a thing we were going to do, but I already missed the window. The window was going to open with it. Oh, okay. I'll do it next week. Okay. Uh, That's good. Great. Save something <clears throat> for next week. Yeah. Uh, welcome to episode 67 of the world famous, uh, internationally Jeez. renowned, globally celebrated, rad dude cast. Wee-oo, wee-oo, wee-oo. Roo, 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 roo. Uh, my name, of course, is Brendan Ayer. Uh, I'm here with my illustrious, notable uh, friend, intelligent, beautiful uh, friends, globally. Yep. Uh, acknowledged as <laughs> premium, premium top-level stand-up comedians, as well as not-to-be-topped loyal friends and good sons to their mothers. Excellent athletes, phenomenal at crossword puzzles, mm. dangerously dangerous at knife fights, inscrutably undefeatable at Puzzles. Anthony DeVito. Mm-hmm. Hey, hello. And Mr. Greg Stone. We're back. Okay. We are back. Uh, we are back. Of course, uh, uh, 67 episodes we've been with you, and we ask you, we beg of you, we uh, uh, call out to you, to your soul, to follow us on Twitter at the Rad Dude Cast to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and to share uh, this wonderful uh, piece of, of of ear candy uh, with everyone that you've ever yeah, met. Yeah, if you like it, share it. In your life. Stop. What are uh, you doing? Why wouldn't 67 episodes uh, you're not sharing it? Another thing I'd like you to do right now. Yeah. I'd like you to do this right now. I'd like you to pause okay. the podcast after I'm done saying this and do it. I need you to follow on Twitter at... Greg Stone underscore at Greg Stone underscore and then also follow at Mm. Anthony DeVito underscore Mm. Anthony DeVito underscore and Brendan C. Air. That's E-Y-R-E is how you spell air. Follow us on Twitter. I hope you're having a good week. We've got some Twitter shout outs that the masses have asked of us. Oh, Uh, then I've got an Instagram one that I wanted to shout out. Okay. All Um, right. Me too. uh, At Logan Nut underscore that's O L O G A N U T underscore said everyone go listen to at the Rad Ducast. Thank you, Logan. Uh, Logan also said tell Grog I said hi. So <laughs> no thanks for that because you're gonna anger Greg. Uh, his name's Greg, not Grog. Uh, Urge, of course, our premium number one fan at Urge Mira. Uh, said, shout out to Gabriel Chate, rough, rough, rough. I don't know who that is. <laughs> uh, shout out to Twisty. <laughs> shout out to Twisty the Clown, R.I.P. Shout out to my boy Woo Woo. We know who that is. And he also says, shout out to my fraternity, Beta Kappa Gamma at LSU. I was not in a fraternity, and nor were either of you, correct? Well, I didn't even go to college. No, I, I went to a party or two. Yeah. But nothing stuck. <laughs> I went to a party or two. <laughs> but nothing uh, else. Uh, of course, uh, Greg's brother, Joe Stone, uh, one of the uh, top, uh, shout out to one of the top hardcore bands in the world, The Banner. Follow them on Twitter, at The Banner NJ. Yeah, they got a new album coming out. New album Make coming sure you out. buy that. Uh, sh- uh, Gary Warner 95 says, uh, I think that frogs deserve a shout out for being able to jump around and shit. Okay. Uh, uh, questionable. <laughs> <laughs> questionable. I don't know, man. I, I give a shout out to frogs. I got no problems with that. Shout out to frogs from Anthony. No shout out to frogs from me. What's your beef with frogs? You I know? love a frog, but okay. I don't think they're big podcast listeners, and I'm not going to waste my breath. Wow, you are shrewd. Uh, thank you. But uh, efficient. Thank so you. So that's pretty good. Uh, and then uh, at Wham U E L. At Wham underscore U E L uh, wants a shout out, but he want he he wants us to shout his name, not any of that whispering crap. Well, I'm gonna meet you halfway and just speak it in a regular tone. I don't know you. You do not deserve a shout. 
Maybe you do. Who? Wham? What was his name? Wham. 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 Thank you, gentlemen. Then, of course. <clears throat> Just Wham? He was the first guy to get Wham on Twitter? No, no, no. <laughs> he got an early. At Wham underscore UEL. He's probably the 500th guy to get Oh, Wham. yeah. Uh, you got to get on these things early. Uh, Urge claims we owe him $10 for <laughs> new followers that he brought us. <laughs> two, two, uh, two caveats to that. One. I checked when he uh, wrote that. He did not bring us any new followers. <laughs> and two, we never promised him any money for new followers. But <laughs> we'll see if we can get that $10 out to you. Um, <laughs> uh, and then, of course, uh, we did a, a, a super fun episode. The three of us were guests on our friend uh, Jared Freed's uh, drinking game episode of the Total Frat Move podcast. Total Frat Move podcast. Check out the drinking game episode. The three of us are on that. I'm moderating. Greg and Anthony are getting fucked up. I think it's very funny. Did you guys get a chance to listen to that? No, I was too scared. I thought it was fantastic. Um, All his fans are terrible people. Dude, Urge goes to LSU. Yeah. Oh, okay. I've known that. You have? Yeah. Oh, I'm just looking at his Instagram pictures What's right LSU? Now. Uh, What's Louisiana so good about State that? University. It's a big party school. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, a good guy, man. Hey, Urge, man, get us, uh, get, us in the, get us a show there, man. We'll come perform. He's... We'll come get real drunk with you. We've tr we've uh, taken this approach with him before. Yeah, yeah. He it doesn't. Uh, it, yeah, yeah. He doesn't quite <laughs> get it together. Yeah. Uh, maybe he will again. We'll come perform. Well, tell him. Go talk to your faculty and say, "I got with these famous New York comedians. I need some scratch." They'll give you a bunch of scratch, and we'll come perform. No, listen to this. Yes, do that. But also, <laughs> here's the easier route. Mm -hmm. You're you're a member of a fraternity. I will tell you right now. Me, Anthony, and Greg. Will come down there and perform airfare included for so you don't have to cover airfare if you give us. He's got to cover airfare. I can't. I can't fly. Out cover there. Hold on, I'm this? I'm coming up with a, a figure so he doesn't have to worry about airfare. If All you right. pay oh, us, okay. if your fraternity can come up with a thousand dollars each, three three thousand dollars. Yeah, we would come down there and we'd put on a phenomenal yeah hour and a half stand up show yep. for yeah. three thousand dollars, and that goes out to anyone for three thousand dollars. We'll go anywhere, anytime. Hey, if you ha we'll do your birthday party in California. We OBO too. I'm gonna say OBO or best offer. Shoot us an offer. Come, come in, come in light. <laughs> yeah, come in light. We'll see what we can do. Or, come in light. We'll knock it down. Or I'll tell you this: <laughs> come in heavy. Come in heavier. Come, come in heavy. heavy. I have if to suggest. Uh, if come your in father's heavy. a sheik and you want to offer us forty grand to perform in Abu Dhabi, we'll be there. Yeah, and uh, if we can drive to you, that brings the price down. Yeah, I, or up substantially. Yeah, right. Yeah, come at us with your best we offer. We shouldn't have given a number. We shouldn't have given a number. No, 3000 is good because 3000 I would go anywhere because including airfare, us, we yeah. can still come out doing at, all right. At least doing all right. You but know? here's the thing, though. But now people are either going to scare people away or lowball them. Well, or they're like, oh, I had 10000 I was going to give them. Yeah, but here's the thing. Well, if, yeah, give if us. you were going to give us 10000 ignore the 3000 part. Yeah. Yeah. Ignore it, ignore it, ignore it. And I know we goof around a lot on this podcast, and we do seem probably sometimes a little, uh, uh, you know, flighty, a little disorganized. But I, we're not kidding around. When the, the three of us are professional stand up comedians, we're good at what we do. We'll put on a heck of a show. When the K's come in, we start cleaning up. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Throw a couple K's in. <laughs> I'm gonna clean it up for you. Three Ks, which not no racist connotations with that, but uh, uh, also you know if you're, the, I'll perform for them if they can come up with three grand. Yeah, hey, if you can, <laughs> if you just cover travel and have a good trade, I'm into a trade. I'll trade my services for something good. Send me, uh, send us some offers on what you got to trade. I'll do it for a flat screen television or maybe just a oh, Nintendo games. All not talking about performing for the Ku Klux Klan. Was I the only one? No, I heard no, what you said. Oh, okay, oh, okay. A thousand. Wait, you were talking about the Ku Klux Klan? Yeah, because I said <laughs> yeah. three Ks, no racist connotations, and Anthony said, "Well, I would do it for them if the price was right." Yeah, if the price is right, I'll do yeah, it. Yeah, the anything. price is right. I'm not changing my material. <clears throat> yeah. Well, but that's the problem. See, the price is going to have to be huge for me because it's going to be awkward as shit. Because <laughs> yeah. any comedian booked by the Ku Klux Klan, obviously, <laughs> they're expecting 
a white supremacist racist comedian, and that's just not what I do. <laughs> but see, let me let me let me. Yeah, but say I this. think you would do better. You don't have any, you know what I mean? Racially charged material. Yeah, I think. Yeah, they like, want I, was, like I didn't start charged. talking right there. Like I didn't write start talking right there. You drew plowed through me. What I'm trying to say here is a very good point. Is that I'm a big comic book guy, but I don't expect people to do comic book material right. when I when I have them when I watch them perform. Maybe they just want a funny comedian. Yeah, that they being are just said, people. That being said, yeah. though, if you uh, hired a comedian through, say, a comic book club or a comic book enthusiast club, you would expect a little comic book. Maybe. If you hire, if you were hiring a comedian for a wedding, you don't go, "Oh, this guy's going to do what." Well. Or the wedding jokes. Well, if you hire a comedian for a wedding, you're an idiot because it yeah. never works. True, I've never seen it work <laughs> I've never either. Never seen it. No. Or a funeral comic. Uh, I've done a few funerals, lighten up the mood. In fact, somebody. Uh, I feel like eventually that could become an institution where for uh, you could have a comedian at a funeral and that's standard. Yeah. And per years, people will be like, I don't know how people weren't doing that. For yeah, years. yeah. That would be a standard thing. My rash has gone from my feet to my crotch, and that's just over for me. I don't know. That might be a different rash. I think it might be. It could uh, just be uh, chafing. I, yeah. Somebody e emailed me about a potential wedding gig. Uh, oh, really? And they said it was a friend of a friend. and they uh, Three grand. Well, and, I'll be there. And they want, Well, they wanted my honest assessment. It was like a year and a half away, and I said, listen, you know, they, they – uh, I said, listen, I'll do the gig, but I'll, if you, since you're a friend of the friend, I'll tell you the, my honest assessment is not to have a comedian at your wedding. Yeah. <laughs> it never yeah. works. Because yeah. when yeah. when is the time when it works? It never yeah. works because no. it's, it, 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 it's their day. It's their day. People want to hear about them. And yeah. it's like, I don't have any jokes I'm about gonna them. I'm going to talk about my life. Yeah. 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 I don't even know you, and I'm just going to start talking about my life. Right. Yeah. It's your clear day. Yeah. It's yeah. so weird. Can I tell you, this is a nice scam I got running. Uh Someone asked me to do their wedding. They wanted me to MC their wedding, right? They were like, well, just come, you MC the wedding. It'd be oh, really yeah, funny, yeah. right? Give me a $100 deposit. And then continually through the year, I just dropped notes that maybe I wasn't very good. And what they did was canceled it. I kept the deposit. Smart. $100 for nothing. That's a good move. Yeah. So you just got to do that, I think. Get a $100 deposit and then just continually <laughs> tell them. It's like, send them letters from anonymous. Like, you don't want to have a comedian at your wedding. <laughs> Then they'll drop the idea. You get deposit. Uh, that's what I was going to ask you is what were these hints you were dropping? Uh, just really – he added me on Facebook, and I would just add really bad Facebook posts. <laughs> so that's what's been uh, going on with your Facebook. So you just do Facebook status that are like, <laughs> uh, another wedding I screwed up at. <laughs> Man. 100% divorce Man. rate in wedding yeah. diaper format. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. You guys want to hear a quick one? Yeah. Story? Yeah. I was trying this new joke yesterday. Um, it's like a crowd work thing, right? Where I hate how comedians are like, "Hey, where are you from?" Because I don't know geography, yeah. right? So I was like, uh, "So I was like, I was trying to write a joke about being like, so I need to talk to you about things that I know about." So I was like, "So how do you?" I was like, "Hey, what's? Hey, did you ever? Uh, when you were in eighth grade, did you get a girl almost pregnant and then you didn't know what to do, right?" So I tried that joke out, and then the crowd wasn't laughing, and they didn't laugh at any joke. I did for the rest of the set. <laughs> they hated me, and I didn't know why, so I started yelling at them, and I was like, what the fuck is wrong with you people? You suck. This isn't me. These jokes work. And I'm like, you get cocky, arrogant. So then I was like, let me listen to the recording, because maybe I was off. Yeah. The I opening joke, said. I, I said, you said, have you ever had sex with a girl in eighth grade and almost got her pregnant? <laughs> is what I said, not when you were in eighth grade, did right. you have a pregnancy scare? Yeah. Right, right. So right. these people were just standing up against pedophilia, yeah. and I was letting them have it for that. Right. So I want to take a shout out to everybody who was at LOL at 810. You're all good people. I'm sorry <laughs> I freaked out on you. Even though the material was still funny, I think the material still was better than right. even if you're a pedophile. Funny's funny. Uh, well, I don't know. If I, come, if I know a backstory of... Uh, Roman Polanski, you watch his movies? Uh, well, Woody Allen. I'm on Woody those Allen, levels. Roman Polanski, <laughs> Roman Polanski <laughs> has admitted to what he did. Woody Allen, it's questionable. Uh, it's never been proven. Right. Uh, I don't know. I would my take Michael on, Jackson. <laughs> Michael Jackson. I think Michael Jackson was innocent. Me too. I really do. I think he in his brain. I think he probably did some stuff that was not quite right with kids, but I don't think it was sexual. And I think his brain was that of a child. Yeah, I really do. Yeah, I think yeah, his, yeah. It, I know. his childhood upbringing was so fucked up that he became it stalled stopped there. Yeah, it stopped there. When you hear him talk, because you hear him talk, you would hear interviews, and he'd say like, "I did a doo doo." 
Yeah. It's like, oh, you're a you got child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why well, would even say you got to let him date kids because he is a kid. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. who they date. Let him you date know what kids. I mean? He's got more in common with them. Uh, he can talk to them about roller coasters and monkeys and, you know. Yeah, uh, but a kid a kid doesn't make the right decision and then he's going to want to have sex. Yeah, maybe. I don't think. Those are two kids sex. not making the right decision. I don't think you let We're him date the Michael child. Jackson wrong. <clears throat> I don't think you let him date the kids, but I, I do agree. No, I don't agree. <laughs> See, I'm going to play devil's advocate here and say that. I understand why they wouldn't want you to date a kid. Sure. But I think, yeah, sure. I mean, it makes sense that if your kid mind, why not be able to let him date a kid? <coughs> but are kids well, allowed to date each other? Yeah. yeah. Your parents See, will that's come not in regulated. and say... Your that's parents true. encourage it. Well, that's why that's there's there's interesting cases that are going on now with technology where, you know, these kids who are, you know, in middle school, early in high school, <coughs> get... Uh, sexed each other, right. and then and then usually the man ends up sharing those pictures or the boy, I should say, right? And and they have hard, difficult sort of legal cases to decide is that distributing child pornography? Right. And the right. Ca- and the courts have generally said yes, right? It is. Even so, a kid it's... could go to jail for child pornography yeah. when he's a child, yeah, but he can't be tried as an adult, yeah. Um, Right, he could not be. Well, I mean, I suppose he could be tried as an adult because they do that in murder cases sometimes, but probably not. Um, but he's a now he's a sex offender. Yeah, you're a sex offender in high school. That's not right to me because it's a fucked up thing to do. But you're still a kid. These kids don't fucking know. They don't even understand repercussions of life. They don't understand what that even really means, what that entails, how much pain it's going to bring somebody by doing this. Of course, of course. Um, well, we've been going on hard on these high school kids lately. Yeah, we have, or the, you well, know, everyone, people, the people of us. It is a, <laughs> it is a, uh, it's a dangerous world with technology. I do think it's, you know, because in perhaps not, you know, 10 years, the, it, it will become a time where even politicians, where no one will be, everyone will be at the age where they grew up with you know, 10 or 15 years, everyone will be at the age where they grew up with social media. Mm. And that never goes away. So, you know, pretty soon you're going to have someone running for president where you can look at their tweets and their Facebook from when they were right. 22. Yeah, we're not yeah. going to be alive for that. Oh, yeah. We Yo, will. yeah, we will. A president who was born yes. in social media? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. because A president that, that, who's 50? 20... Presidents are 50 years. Yeah, but 20 years. In 20 years. Uh, no, they'd have to be born media... in 2000. No, social media has been around. Say they're twenty when Facebook came out. When did Facebook come out? Two thousand. No, I'm saying it had to have been one when Facebook came out. Yeah, but I'm saying if they're twenty, I'm no, saying but if they're early twenties. Yeah, I saw that stuff. They you're grew right. up they with were, it. Yeah, they grew up. If you are born in 1990, yeah, then your your life is on social media, right? And you'll be yeah, and right. you'll be eligible to run for president. What you can run when you're what thirty five. Mm-hmm. Not I don't that, know. I mean, don't check. You know, yeah. Let's somebody fact check that. But that's a weird like thirty-five. That. Why? With thirty, you can't run for president. What, what? What does the five years do? Let me do a quick. Well, you're not mature look enough. Look five of, years of experience of maturity. Yeah. <coughs> you should be able to run president at eighteen years old. You should be able to run. You're an adult. The world says you know. Well, I could. This is my. <laughs> I could die for this country, but I can't run it. Well, that's of course the age-old, uh, similar the age-old dilemma, which is like, wait a second, I can go to war, but I can't drink a beer? Yeah. That's crazy. That's cr- 35, well, that's you can't be president? That's just a weird thing they did. Yeah, 35. I don't know. That makes no sense. Yeah, I I don't, I don't, I agree. What if you have a brain tumor? Maybe they'll lower the age for you, because it's like, right. well, you know, it's my it's my last wish to try to run for president. Yeah. They did that for that college girl on the football, the basketball. They, they moved up the basketball. Right, just for her. Just so she could play, because she had a, 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 a brain-destroying melting that sucks tumor. too i was bawling s- i was bawling when i watched that sorry to interrupt you no, no, the basketball okay. well i watched the 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 sort of little mini doc they did on that woman on on espn and i was just bawling which one the girl who played basketball yeah yeah they moved the day up they for her? moved they moved the if you haven't seen it uh, a woman from indiana uh she's uh got not a long time to live her only dream was to play uh college basketball she was good enough to play college basketball uh uh, she was recruited and then diagnosed with a, a terminal brain cancer, and they moved the whole season up so she could j- be ready to play one one college basketball game. It was uh, yeah, and it was amazing. She had like two months to live or something, and she's still playing. That's crazy. Yeah. You're like well, you're that intact. You're like, well, you still have two months left. 
Did you see this one about the lady with the? This is a bit of a heartbreaker. The one with uh, she chose to die. She moved to Seattle. Right. Oh yeah. What's that about? I saw snippets about it, but I didn't investigate further. Yeah. Nah. Well, maybe we should move on. It's just it's a, very sad. It's the uh, you know sad cast today. It's it's euthanasia. Okay. We're both sick, you know. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> hell, yeah. That woman did cho- choose to die with dignity, and I I am a full supporter of of euthanasia. Yeah, I think I am who too. Wants to die should be able to die. No one I chose to how be make born. Suicide illegal. You want to take yourself out? Go for it. Yeah, who's to say? If you, I mean, I think that you should do everything you can to keep people from killing themselves. But if someone is like, I did all this, yeah. I still want to die. Sure. You go ahead, man. Look, I'm sorry, it's sure. not working out for you. Yeah. If you can't find happiness, but I think that we should be like, you got to go through this ten step program of, we'll do everything to try to make you happy first. You know, you got to give us a year or six months. Right. That's not bad. You know, I, and then we give you a motorcycle on a ramp. My least favorite. <laughs> oh, that's fun. We're doing a motorcycle out. <laughs> yeah, that's what I would do. <laughs> well, why ramp. not? That's the thing they do. That they always do. Well, generally, when you're super sick, it's hard to do anything. But I would do a fun way. Yeah, that's what know? they say. They say die with dignity. I say I want to do die with a thrill. Yeah, I want to yeah. pass that law. You know, let me jump out of an airplane with with some feather wings. <laughs> what are some experiments you want to try? Let me try them for you. Right. Hey, we really don't know if a human can do this. Right. All right. Well, I'm on my way out. Right. Hook me up with a rocket pack. <laughs> That's like when they were uh, cutting people's heads off in the French Revolution. Doctors at the time, what? Who knows how you became a doctor yeah. back then? Would all would 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 run experiments to see how long your head lived? You mm-hmm. know where they'd yeah. find a willing candidate and say like, once they chop your head off, if <laughs> just keep talking. If you can still, if you still know what's going on. Blink to me. <laughs> <laughs> so you imagine some little scrummy, you know, uh, 17th century French doctor just running up to a head <laughs> on the guillotine looking at the head. It's very awkward. No, it's <clears throat> terrible. Uh, now. Um, oh, I wanted to give a shout out. Okay. Um, to to Theroux. Underscore being underscore cool at Instagram dot com. Uh, he said, uh, "Slam through sixty two episodes of the podcast in a matter of weeks. Hilarious stuff." At Greg Stone at Anthony at hashtag Bernie Mac lives. Oh right, that guy was great. I yeah. I don't know if I know that guy. I think he's from Cleveland. Oh really? Let me look him up. Yeah, oh, okay. his name's Peter or something. I'm not or Patrick. Yeah, Patrick. Uh. Oh, maybe he's not from Cleveland. No, I don't know. But yeah, he loved the he loves the cast. That's cool. Um, you know, people love this podcast, and uh, we do realize that we're not as consistent as we could be week to week. But that's something you if you love the Rad Dude Cast, you put up with. We're super busy. We're all yeah. three of us have burgeoning careers. Also, if you subscribe, it just comes when it comes. It's it like comes Christmas. When it comes. But we do generally <laughs> try and get one out a week. Um, <laughs> Yeah, good. You get a good surprise. New rad dude. Okay, so I can get home and do it. Yeah. People say I think it's better to do it the other way because whenever I get something that's a surprise, you ever get something in the mail? How much fun is that? Something in the mail oh, you're I not expecting? A, you I yeah. love getting a, something is, in the mail. Yeah, yeah. It's like something in the mail. Great. The rad dude. Um, it's a surprise. Maybe it's a Wednesday. Maybe it's a Thursday this week. Oh, that's a good point you bring up. DM us on Twitter, uh, or just get at us on Twitter if you want our address to send us something because we not. Don't send a mail bomb or anything, but like if you show, challenge me, if you've got shirts or send a mail bomb, you know, a, a gift certificate to Outback Steakhouse, whatever you want, uh, send it. Now, I do have one bit of a problem. Someone, some listener seemed to have sexted me on uh, Snapchat, mm-hmm. uh, which I'm normally not against, but this fellow was a gentleman, <laughs> and I'm still not, I'm not a, uh, Homosexual. I'm not. Well, I'm not. No, but I'm also not uh, homophobe. I'm sure, not, no. It didn't anger me, but <clears throat> yeah. it's like that's not that's not really going to do it for me. So I mean, I guess do whatever you want to do, but th- you know, I'd rather you didn't do that. I suppose it's not my <laughs> yeah yeah cup of tea. But it's like if you send a <clears throat> vegan a picture of a steak, you know, it's like I'm not. Uh, I don't like it. Yeah. Uh, so don't. If you're male, don't sext me on Instagram. See, I gotta say, I, with this whole cat calling business that's out mm-hmm. now, it's really got me thinking. Because this whole time, when gay guys would sometimes, a gay guy would come up to you and, and you'd touch you, and and I'd be like, "Hey, man, stop it!" They'd be like, "What are you homophobic?" And now it's like, "No, you're just, you're just a sex cat calling thing." Yeah, yeah, you're right. just. Right. I don't. You don't. I'm not ready for that. Right. I have no problem with you 
being gay, but I have do have a problem with you touching me without asking me. Although I don't touching, well, I don't people, mind. It's people, the weird things you say. Yeah, no one ever touches me. No one's if ever. If a gay done guy that to touches me, me really? I don't mind. But if a gay guy comes up to me and says, "I'm gonna fucking make your ass bleed," which <laughs> that's not a particular thing that they've said, but some guy said something very weird to me one time, and really? I said, "I don't." Yeah, at the Apple Store, uh, and I was like, "Well, I don't know why you would say that. Like that makes me feel creepy." Right. I like a good massage or a good tap me on the back or a rub down. <laughs> But, like, don't say creepy things to me. Yeah, no, that's weird. And a woman as well. I don't want a sure. woman to come up to me and be like, I'm going to fucking make your dick bleed. Like, I don't want to hear that. Yeah. Well, that'd be all right with me. All right. Brendan, you do that, too. I'm more <laughs> of a soft guy. I like to be like, I want to spend some time with you and, and, and uh, you know, hang out a little more, get to know you. But I have a girlfriend, so either way. I have, I, yeah, I have a girlfriend. Uh... But you can Snapchat me. I'll still look at them. Yeah, I'll still look at them. Party time go. He, uh, Greg is uh, party time go at Snapchat. <laughs> I'm Mr. Radical. Spell out Mr. Mr. Radical on Snapchat. Um, Anthony is Devo for Tivo. That's uh, uh, with the number four. Devo for Tivo. Uh, uh, of course, on Instagram, I'm Brendan Air. You know what I got to do? What Here's what I got to do. What's up? Because when we were on uh, Jared Freed's TFM podcast, yeah, 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 I yeah. realized I need the same handle for all my yeah. social media. Do, Jared just says JTrain56 right. on all platforms. Right. And I that's what I got to do. Uh, can I change my Twitter? Because the problem, the reason I have that C in there is because there's another guy, Brendan Ayer. Right. But can I keep my followers and change my actual handle, or can you only change the what it says up top? What do you think asking us is going to do? You really think that you and him, that him and I <laughs> well, are going to be able to you're good at the Twitter game. Mm, I don't think you can. I think the original name has to stick, but I would yeah. maybe email them. Yeah. I think someone did change theirs. I had to change that Snapchat, but I just deleted my whole account. Uh, well, one of the worst things to happen to me on social media was when your brother uh, took, put, made your picture his Facebook picture and then just changed his name to your name. To Gerg. No, he but, but there was a brief time where I There's think he had Greg. There was a brief time where he was just Greg Stone. Just Greg Stone. And no, it, it was, was just Gerg because Greg, he would have to have kept it for 60 days. If oh. you change your Facebook name... You're stuck for 60 days. So it was Gerg, but we all thought it was Greg because it looks the same. But then, yeah, I thought it was Greg. Me too. I he think he just did your have picture it Greg at some point somehow. Maybe there was a guy in the Marvel Legends community that changed it to Greg, <laughs> and he was Greg for 60 days. It's really funny <laughs> how you can just change your name to another guy's name. It would be funny <clears> if a, a sort of Facebook rebellion started to happen where everyone slowly. Uh, became move, everyone else. Became every, there's just one guy on Facebook <laughs> yeah. to confuse the whole system yeah. and take yeah. it down. We all just change our name to Mike Smith with the same <laughs> picture. Uh, that'd be fun. I might get out of the whole social media game. I'd like to reach a level in my career where I could do that. Because I think for right now I need it for comedy and to get stuff out there. Sure. But I don't particularly like it. Sometimes I like Twitter. Somet I like looking at people's Twitter yeah. more than I like... Uh, They're like mini news articles to me, right? From a, either a person's life or something they found. I, I so I, I don't mind it. I don't know that I like being a participant in it. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit of notoriety now, and so there's some people that I don't know that think that they could just talk to me, <laughs> yeah. which I don't like. People just be like, oh, like everyone thinks they're funny, and they're like, ah, this guy's act is shit. And I'm like, <laughs> who do? You, why would you say that to me? Like that's really. I read that, and it's very mean. And I get a, you get a bunch of those. This one guy makes me fucking mad as hell. And he and I'm like, uh, you're a comedian. You can take it. It's like that's not no. Why would you be mean? Why this is your life? You're he's a garbage. Yeah. It's also, you don't know because uh, your act is great. Not only a yeah, and he hasn't seen my act. And B, it's like you are just a guy. You don't realize the work that it takes. You don't realize right. that no one is good at stand-up comedy until they've been doing it minimum five years, right. really. You know? Yeah. I mean, it's like... And I'm very good at stand-up. Yeah, I, I you're very you're good at stand-up comedy. It's like, you don't realize that this is a... That's like when people are like, you know, oh, my nephew's funny. He should do it. It's like, well, they, then he should fucking do it. He, like, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. not... I didn't sit here and tell you I'm the funniest. Yeah. I put in the goddamn work right. to get to this point. Like... It's not, yeah, maybe he is funnier than me, but he's got a long, a lot of work if he yeah. wants to do this. Well, Bill Burr said it the best. Bill Burr was, it was like, though you, 
the minute you start doing open mics, you become unfunny again. And then right. you have to relearn how to be funny because now the fucking light is on you. And right. you have to realize, what do I do with my hands? How to repeat this? Like, it's like, yeah, it's very easy to be funny. That's what makes me crazy about improvisers. It's like, yeah, improvising is fun and amazing, but it's very easy to be funny off the cuff. Right. It's very hard to repeat the funny and to re able right. to write a joke that you're doing and, and continually do it with the same kind of energy. Right. Yeah, I agree. Now, uh, something I wanted to talk to you about, Anthony, particularly, oh, wow. and Greg a little bit. I think you're you're less of a fan than Anthony, but I, I <laughs> went to MetLife Stadium. Uh, yep. I saw Monday Night Football Giants versus the Colts. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple bones to pick. Okay. Uh, the stadium. Uh-huh. Beautiful building. Sure. I couldn't tell what I didn't like about it. There was something about the energy that I didn't like in the in the, in the atmosphere. And then I realized it's not your fault. It's the fact that it's a shared stadium. Right. It's so impersonal. I forgot. Right. I, like, it took me a while to put that together. I said, why is this? This just doesn't seem to have the... Hutzpah. The personal feel the that Brown Stadium has. Sure. And then I realized, oh, it's because the Jets and the Giants play here, so everything has to be vanilla. There's no, like, yeah. you go into Browns, it's very orange. It's very uh, personalized feel for the mm. Browns. You go into MetLife, and it's uh, soulless, almost. You know, they can only change the lights. and the So I, I get that. That's not on the Giants. Right. But I did, I was disappointed in that. And then B... Fuck, man, your fans are fickle. I have never seen, like, I guess in Cleveland, because we're used to losing, yeah, yeah. it takes a lot for, for a you. guy to get booed. Right. In New York, holy shit. Yeah. Like, they would turn on a guy in a second, yeah. one bad play, and they're booing people. And it's like, this isn't helping your team. Stop this. Yeah. Be supportive. Yeah. They were just uh, the mean. They were just mad at the Giants. Uh, oh, man. Well, so the thing with the Giants is that they can be either very good or very bad at the drop of a hat. Right. So I feel like, we're like hey, you're being bad again. Right. Be right. good now. <laughs> yeah. 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 And maybe that's a, a common with a team that's had a taste of a taste of greatness. Sure. You know, there's sure. how many Super Bowls have the Giants won? Oh, well, I think four or five. Yeah. They, yeah. yeah. They, so... I guess in Cleveland, it's just like we've been conditioned to For, just keep liking a bet. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I, I, a lot of lot of meatheads there. Oh yeah, ton of meatheads. Uh, it wasn't. I wasn't uh, thrilled <laughs> with the Giants fan base. I would <laughs> yeah, say. I, I, yeah. I, uh, but they look bad, man. Did they? Yeah. yeah they I didn't watch bad. the game. I tried to TiVo it, and then I ended up getting the score uh, before. Um, I could watch it, so I was like, forget it. But, yeah, it seemed like a blowout. Yeah, and not not to turn this too much into the sports cast, but I'm hurting because, of course, my Cavaliers aren't looking great. We're one and two. Are they one and two? We're one and oh, two. Really? they gotta find their they got to find their footing. LeBron is struggling. I hope I hope it's just a matter of, of, of this team melding the boys. Yeah, I yeah it's so. going to take some time. Yeah. Uh, the Heat didn't win immediately. Right. Or they did. No, they didn't. They no, they had struggled. Yeah. Yeah, and they had and they had and they had Bosch, the monster. Yeah. Yeah, this is a different uh dynamic than what uh was with Miami. So this is a whole different makeup of a team. Yeah. So we'll see. But uh that's rough. Pete Rose got hurt again? Not Pete Rose. <laughs> yep. Pete Rose, uh, Alan Rose. Yeah, Pete Rose, What's his Pete name? Rose fell on his house and Darryl fell on his house. He's cleaning his gutters. <laughs> yeah. Jeff Derek Rose. Rose. Derek Rose. Derek Rose. Yeah. 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 Both his again? ankles, but he's back. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, that I really, was a minor injury. I got my fingers crossed with this guy. I know. I know. Well, it is it is a dangerous road because I feel like um, uh, in professional sports, injuries lead to more injuries. Once a guy becomes injury prone, I think your body becomes vulnerable and you get, you know, you're prone. it seems like guys who get injured a lot continue to get yeah. injured a lot. Yeah, yeah. You, very rarely do you see a guy who's had a couple of major injuries and then never, no more injuries. Who was my guy? And then he got too many injuries and then he died. And then he may have died. <laughs> like it was like a first round draft. Bowen? Bowie. Greg Odin? Bowie. Oh, Bowie, who got drafted above Michael Sam Jordan. Bowie. Sam Bowie. Yeah. yeah. Got Sam drafted Bowie. above Michael Jordan. Yeah. And then was just, guy was Mr. Glass. This is in the 70s when I was, when I used to watch. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, do you want to hear the greatest, uh, the greatest deal in the history of sports, perhaps in the history of business. I just watched uh, a great ESPN 30 for 30 documentary 
uh, about the spirits of St. Louis. Oh, okay. So these guys were an ABA basketball team, right? Long story short, when the ABA folded and merged with the NBA, four team, the NBA only wanted four teams. They wanted uh, uh, the Pacers, the Nets. And the Tropics. The Pacers, the Nets. Uh, who else? The Tropics. No, the Spurs and the Nuggets. Right. Right? So there were two other ABA teams that the ABA had to buy out because right. the NBA didn't want them. The Kentucky Colonels <laughs> got bought out for a one-time payment of uh, $2.5 million, which at the time in the early yeah, 70s, that's a decent deal, yeah. right? Uh, these two brothers from New Jersey who owned the Spirits of St. Louis, all they ever wanted was to own an NBA franchise. They wouldn't be bought out. They, they refused. They finally negotiated what, at the time, nobody thought was worth anything, but they were smart. They finally negotiated. Their buyout was... Uh, a four-seventh share of one team's annual TV deal forever. <laughs> <laughs> so and oh that, that, that was it forever. So last year, the league finally bought them out of that because the league w was like, this is crazy. We've been paying these guys every year forever. <laughs> yeah. The league finally bought them out. So before, up to last year, they had made uh, – something like $500 million <laughs> off this deal. And then the league bought them out last year for a lump sum payment of $600 million. Oh so these God. two brothers from New Jersey <laughs> owned a piece of shit ABA basketball <laughs> team in St. Louis for two years in the, in the 70s and have made $1.1 $1 billion <laughs> doing nothing. And this fucker in Kentucky walked away with $2.5 million. Oh, <laughs> right. man. Which is, he's got to be. What team did they uh, get the fourth-sevenths of their television? So the fourth-seventh, the, the reason it was fourth-seventh was because there were seven remaining ABA teams. Right. Um, one folded immediately after the ABA folded, so they didn't need to be bought out. Right. And then there were the two. So that was why they came up with a number four-seventh. Right. Because so, they wanted one-seventh of the share of the of the four teams that made it in. Oh, so they got oh, one-seventh from the Pacers, Nets, oh, Nuggets, oh, oh, I see, I see. and Spurs. Wow. Oh, wow. Um, forever. <laughs> Which is crazy. And the, guy, the guys in the documentary were like, it's crazy. Even given the fact that TV revenues weren't a lot at the time, yeah. it's crazy that no lawyer was like... Forever. Uh, <laughs> maybe we should... The, the exact wording was four-seventh share in perpetuity. And no lawyer was like, yeah, maybe we should put a cap on this or a time date. Yeah. Just forever. Um, and the NBA was sick of paying it, so they finally bought them out. Uh, but that was so funny to me that these two brothers from Jersey who were just like... <laughs> I, I don't know what they paid for the spirits of St. Louis, but it was probably like nothing. Yeah. The ABA, this documentary, I recommend it. The ABA was awesome. Yeah. Because it was just like they invented all this shit. Nobody was dunking really in the NBA. Right. right the ABA, right. like, they, it was just crazy. Everyone was on drugs. They invented the <laughs> three point shot. The ball was red, white, and blue. Yeah. yeah, yeah, just, yeah. Everyone had, to, like, the spirits of St. Louis. The, on the back of their shirt, they had their nicknames. It's, <laughs> That's it's like, great. It was like just like a know. free for all. Yeah. You got to watch that documentary, Semi Pro. Do you ever see it? Well, semi pro. Yeah, the tropics is based on the spirits of St. Louis. Yeah, their team was the same. The, yeah, was the the tropics. The tropics. Yeah, that's based on <laughs> really? those guys. Is that yeah. actually based on something? Yeah, because uh -huh. those guys were like they were just nuts. They were just uh, <laughs> they. What's his name? They had uh, uh, bad news. Barnes w Wallace Barnes. I forget uh -huh. his name. I mean, he was. People say he might have been the greatest player ever, but he was just high on cocaine. All oh time. man. <laughs> um, uh, maybe Lloyd Barnes, I don't know. Uh, but it was a fascinating documentary. I, I recommend that. Uh, Spirits of St. Louis. Um, uh, I don't know. We do have. Uh, I did line up a, a potential guest. If you guys want to uh, talk to him, okay. Uh, whatever, whatever you'd like. We only have six minutes because I have. I realized that I have a uh, doctor's appointment. Well, I, ha I don't have a metro card, so I have oh. to. So I have to walk to the doctor. Do you want my metro card? When are you going to be back? It's a it's a two thirty appointment. So I don't know. Maybe I'll be back in an hour. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can take my metro card. Three thirty. I'm back. All right. Um. Okay. But we, that only still gives us a little few more minutes anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um. Well. Uh, so let's do this guest. 
Okay, let me bring him in. Uh, yeah, come on in. We're ready for you. He's just been out there the whole time. Yeah, I had him wait. Hello. Hey, what's up, man? Uh, not too much. Oh boy. That's the what? So sorry to keep you waiting the whole time, but we had to kind of, you know, do the podcast. That is okay. I am always willing to wait for a quality podcast. So, you know, it's always weird when Brennan invites someone and then leaves. Uh, sure. We don't actually know anything about you. Give us a little, tell us uh, about you. My name? Yep. Is Dan Zino. Dan Zino. Italian? Uh, no. Okay. Well, I am the king of magazines. <laughs> king of magazines. Oh. Good to have you. Whoa. I have a subscription to over 4,500 magazines. 500 magazines. I am the okay. world record holder. In magazine subscriptions. Danzino, the king of magazines. <laughs> nice, the king. It's good to have some Man. real royalty on wow. this cast. So you can ask me any question you would ever have regarding uh, magazines. Okay. Um, Time magazine. Uh, yes. When Elvis Presley died. Yes. Uh, what was, that? was that your favorite issue? <laughs> no. That was okay. uh, what. That was a phenomenal issue. Mm-hmm. Granted, mm-hmm. Uh, my favorite issue, however, mm-hmm. of Time Magazine uh, was, of course, but of course, uh, a horse is a horse. Of course, of course, was uh, mm-hmm. the Time Magazine uh, article Person of the Year Osama bin Laden because what? controversial. <laughs> I mean, he was the person of the year. Yes, they nominated Osama bin Laden person of the year because uh, Time Magazine, of course, I am a magazine expert. Yeah. Uh, uh-huh. Person of the year does not necessarily mean uh, best person of the year. Just the guy. Just uh, who is dominating the news of the year. Of course, Time uh, says Osama bin Laden. And to me, that that's a is weird move. N- 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 it shows a great deal of integrity. Yeah, but integrity. you don't want to, you don't want to, like, support. You, then someone's like, I want to be the person of the year. I'm going to blow up a bunch more buildings. Oh, did he blow up buildings? Well, he flew planes into them. That was him? Yeah, that was, that was Osama. So, yeah. Then the September 11th tragedies. What did you think that, how did you know him as? Uh, I knew him as Time Magazine's Person <laughs> of the Year 2002. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, Do I, you... I don't know my facts, but I don't know that that's right. And then... um. So, do you read the articles about these people? I mean, it clearly would have said 9-11 in that issue. Uh, well, I do get a lot of magazines. So, sometimes I look at maybe a recipe in Red Book, Mm -hmm. uh, or I'll take a look at uh, In Style magazine. I'll say, who wore it better? (laughs) You know, and I'll take a look at that. But, uh, you know, do I read all of the articles in my 4,500 magazines yeah. that Dan Zeno, King of Magazines, mm-hmm. receives on a yeah. yearly basis? Uh, no. But your favorite one you didn't read? No. Okay. Where do you keep the magazines? This is a lot of... Yes, that is an excellent question. Uh, I have a business, of mm-hmm. course, mm-hmm. Uh, and I sell them to dentist's office, doctor's office. I go around with... Old my... ones? Yes. Yes. I uh, I do not uh, sometimes I'll do a thing and this is uh, sort of what makes me the king mm-hmm. I'll take a I have a of course I have a subscription to uh, highlights mm-hmm. magazine mm-hmm. for the children mm-hmm. what I'll do uh, sometimes for a fun gag mm-hmm. you know for everyone loves it give everyone what they want I'll take the cover of a highlights magazine mm-hmm. I will uh, insert inside I'll cut out all the pages and insert inside uh, a club magazine. Club magazine is the dirtiest of the pornography that I receive. I've never heard of club. Yes, it's very dirty. Full penetration. Oh, boy. Uh, and uh, so, uh, I it's believe... Bad. You're doing that to kids? Well, yes, and I'll, I'll give that to a, a pediatrician's office or say oh a den- dentist's office. It's uh, a despicable uh, thing insert. to do. Why do you say that? Because then you're, we were making children look at pornography before they're ready. They're going to burn their eyes, their minds. Oh, I never thought of it like that. But what did you think of it as? I thought, good laugh. Good laugh for everyone. (laughs) They think highlight. They think, oh, what is Goofus and Gallant up to this month? (laughs) And sure enough, they open it up. uh, Full penetration. Penis. Yeah. Right right inside uh, the woman's whatever you call it. 
So you, since you're selling these, how many do you have in like stock right now? What do you? Uh, at any given time, I have. Uh, I keep in my home uh, roughly uh, three hundred thousand magazines. Oh right. wow! Yes, I've got uh, a terrible uh, magazine bug problem. Oh, magazine bugs. Yes. Never. I haven't experienced those, but I've only had tops three magazines at any given point. That's not enough magazines. Yeah. <laughs> Can I interest you in some more magazines? I mean, they have bugs with them. Uh, well, when I say magazine bug, uh, that's not an actual bug. Oh, I think like bed bugs. No, no. A magazine bug is, uh, they're very common in the magazine uh, collector's industry. Sure. Uh, there are these little men that come to your house and try and steal your magazines. Little men? Yes. The little men, they always have, uh, lots of times you will notice them because they have, they are wearing sweatpants with the, the erection. <laughs> well, you know, don't let those, uh, first off, why are people, people, erect people coming in your magazine? I don't know. That's what, very it's, crazy to me. that's the thing. It's a magazine bug is a crazy man. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll take your magazines and they'll take any magazine. I had a, one magazine bug. I caught him exiting <laughs> my house. Uh, I had him like because I I do have many guns, and I had him at gunpoint uh, <laughs> in my home, and uh, he was stealing uh, 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 forty five issues of of Chicken Magazine. <laughs> What's Chicken Magazine? Oh, it's a fantastic periodical. Uh, everything you would ever want to know about chickens. And, <laughs> I think uh, you get that out in one magazine. It's monthly no, or no, yearly? No, because every uh, in the chicken industry, that's probably Chicken Magazine is probably the one I, I most uh, most thoroughly enjoy to read cover to cover because uh, every month it's well, it's a uh, it's a quarterly magazine, so once every four months it arrives. And in the chicken industry, a lot of people think, oh, technology moves so fast. Technology moves like a snail uh, compared to the developments in chickens. Oh, of course. Yeah, with you know. There's new breeds all the time. <laughs> I thought there was just one breed of chicken. No, chicken. no, you've got uh, red chickens, white chickens. Yeah, roosters. Red chickens. Yeah, red chickens and white chickens. That's it, really. But uh, <laughs> white chicken's fairly new. <laughs> the white chicken's the new. Your mailman must hate you, huh? He's got to carry these magazines around. Well, my mailman. Tip him maybe on Christmas. In interesting uh, thing about that. Uh, <laughs> my mailman uh, died. Yeah, well, I mean, of what? A, a knife. Oh. <laughs> someone murdered him? Yes, someone. Who? You? You got a weird look. Well, here's the thing. Yeah, tell us the story. Uh, if you want to maintain uh, your uh, status mm -hmm. as king of all magazines, mm -hmm. it is very important that every month your magazine should arrive. On time, on time, when promised. Sure. So and that's all I'll say about that. All right, we can move on. I well, guess. I'll say more. Okay, I, say more. I, he wasn't <laughs> delivering the magazine. <laughs> he wasn't delivering the magazines on time. I killed him. You just whoa, well, I, whoa. Uh, I also want to say this probably isn't the first murder that's been admitted on the Rad Dude cast. Nope. We're getting no, really comfortable with a these. lot of criminals come here for confessions. It seems <laughs> yeah. Like. We should, Maybe criminal. not even confessions. Just you know, nonchalantly saying that they've murdered people. What did you do with the body? Uh, another uh, interesting, that's a good question mm -hmm. that you would, should ask. What mm -hmm. did I do with <laughs> the mailman's body? Of course, uh, as you can imagine, the bane of my existence, the, the, the worst aspect of my life, mm -hmm. subscription cards. Oh, oh God, yeah, I that's... couldn't imagine. Oh, the number of subscription uh, uh, cards. Falling everywhere. They fall everywhere. Yeah. It's a mess. And I, of course... Uh, I, and you probably just say, don't give me a card. Subscribe me. Don't give me a card. I'm already subscribed. I yeah. go online. I subscribe to everything I yeah. see. You know, I subscribe to a uh, – I, I don't limit myself to magazines. Yes, I'm the king of magazines, but I'll subscribe to a pamphlet, a flyer, mm. a newspaper, a digital uh, – Download. A digital download subscription. Uh, <clears throat> so <clears throat> I took his body out back. I burned it in a pile of uh, subscription cards. <laughs> It makes make for good kindling. Great kindling. The yeah, best. I hear that. I'm also the prince of kindling. Oh, <laughs> I could imagine. Yeah. Uh, one, 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 one final, one final question I have yes, for I'm you. Yes, because I must go. I'm uh, expecting 
two, I'm expecting uh, the annual <laughs> issue of Rock Review Magazine. <laughs> Just rocks or like the the movie or no. the rock? The actor? Uh no, it just rocks. Just dirty old rocks. <laughs> just the rocks. They review the rocks. It's uh you know, I think this month's episode is going to have an expose about <laughs> sh- about shale. I don't even know what that is. Shale rocks. I don't know either. I go <laughs> shale. For... He's saying shale. No, shale. Shale? What's a shale? It's a type of rock. I don't know either. There's I've different got to... types of rocks? Sure, sure. That's oh, why yeah. I've got to get home and get read up. Yeah. <laughs> because I know nothing about shale. What are those ones you cut in the middle and it's got like a little cavern inside? Very nice. Those rocks? Mm-hmm. Caves. No, no. <laughs> You're thinking of a cave. Oh, I see. Those little molten pieces are Geodes. Something. Oh Maybe. yeah, no, that's a whole different right. magazine. Okay, Sh- Rock Magazine does not uh, ex- in their by- in their bylaws they will not review a fancy rock. Oh, oh, I like a so fancy I rock. So I do have Geode Magazine. That's nice. And then I have I have uh, the uh, Gem and Ruby Review. Oh, mm. gotta which, get a good <laughs> yes, but uh, no Rock on Magazine. Room. You're not going to get anything shiny in there. The top, the most probably granite. Would be the fanciest yeah, yeah. thing you'll find in Rock Magazine. I hear that. Uh, anyway, I couldn't thank you enough for Thanks for coming, man. Thanks for coming, man. Thanks we for really, coming, uh, man. Enjoy learning Danzino. King of all magazines. Do you check him out on his Twitter, uh, Magazine King? Yeah, check me out on my Twitter. Uh, you could also subscribe to my magazine, which is uh, <laughs> Danzino King of Magazines Magazine. <laughs> Very fun. Goodbye, Danzino. Bye. See you, man. Send Brendan back then. we got to get more than three mics. Yeah, how was that guy? Uh, he was cool. It was fun. It was fun. I really enjoyed him. Yeah. I actually learned a lot. Turned out to be a murderer, though. He did murder somebody. Well, that happens a lot. I yeah, know. more than you'd think. Yeah, everyone we've had in, I believe, has murdered someone. All your friends, definitely. Yeah, your <laughs> friends have all murdered someone. Yep. Well, I'm not friends with that guy. Sure, that's... I yeah, thought he had yeah, an yeah. interesting story. I met him. He did. Because I, uh, I was hanging out at a pediatrician's office, and I got a Highlights magazine uh-huh. with a porno inside. Oh, yeah, said, yeah, yeah. That's his move. This is crazy. Yeah, Who did this? He must leave his calling card. Yeah. Um, anyway, can I do uh, a couple plugs? Here? Yeah, do the plugs. Mm-hmm. Um, this will drop today. Uh, what day is today? Wednesday. They're not wondering that. They're yeah. not think. They're not thinking. When is this podcast going to come out? Oh, they're no, already I, listening to it, right? But I've got a. I've got a set up. Oh, what, I see. What I see. day my gig is? Uh, th- what day is today? The uh, fifth. Fifth. fifth? When, yeah. so, so today is Wednesday, November fifth. Wednesday. Uh, November 6th, I'll be at Tomorrow. S- Steel Stacks in the Bethlehem, uh, Allentown, PA uh, area with the great John Fish. Mm. Uh, so come check that out. And then next week, uh, November 12th through 15th, I'll be at the Funny Bone in Des Moines, Iowa uh, with the very funny Greg Warren. So come out to any of those shows. Uh, you know, mention that the Red Dude Cast brought you there. I'll talk to you. Yep. I'll be at Laugh Boston with Jermaine Fowler, November 13th through the 16th, and uh, that's probably it. Um, I'm not going to be anywhere. <laughs> I've been a well all week. Uh, Ugh. Again, subscribe to the uh, podcast. Please do that and follow us on Twitter at the Rad Dude Cast. Um, yeah, I also uh, wanted to thank somebody for... <laughs>